Welcome students. I hope you all are studying well during this lockdown period. In this video, I am going to talk about the part 2 of chapter 1, Rise and Spread of Christianity. Before getting into this video, let's revise from part 1. Christianity arose in Judea. It was founded by Jesus of Nazareth. The Bible is the holy book of the Christians. It includes the Old Testament which records the origin of the Jews and the New Testament which records the deeds and teachings of Jesus. Son of Mary and Joseph Jesus was born at Bethlehem in Judea. His birth is celebrated as Christmas. Jesus preached of God's mercy and love and assured all people of salvation. He preached humility, kindness, forgiveness and mercy in human relations. He discouraged greed and hypocrisy and the worship of multiple gods. Jesus' large following made the upper classes and some of the Jews jealous. They accused him of being a rebel and had him crucified. This event is remembered as Good Friday. Jesus' resurrection on the third day after his death is celebrated as Easter. So my dear students, this is just a brief explanation of part 1 of chapter 1. With that, let's get into the part 2 of the video. The topics which I am going to discuss in part 2 are Christianity in the Roman Empire, Decline of the Roman Empire, I am going to talk about Byzantine Empire, Organization of the Church and Impact of Christian Monasteries. Let's begin. Christianity in the Roman Empire After the death of Jesus, his teachings were spread by his follower, Paul. Jesus' teachings became the basis of a new religion. Paul popularized the idea of Jesus as Christ, who had been specially sent by God to atone for the sins of humanity. This gave the new religion its name Christianity. It appealed to the people, especially the poor, in the Roman society because it involved the worship of only one God and promised salvation to all. In due course, the Christian church developed as an institution. It functioned through places of worship for Christians called Churches. It undertook services like health care, burial, and distribution of arms to the weak and the poor. This was unlike any other religious institution of those times. In this slide, you will be learning about how Christianity has become an official religion of Rome. The Roman emperors tolerated Christianity as yet another of the many religions that existed in their empire. However, there were times when Christians were given cruel and unjust treatment, especially as Christianity did not permit emperor worship. This happened, for example, during the reign of Marcus Aurelius and Diocletian. Christianity gained political support when the Roman Emperor Constantine I converted to Christianity around AD 313. Constantine attributed his political successes to his new religion. He also foresaw that Christianity would spiritually unite the Roman Empire. By the end of the 4th century, Christianity became the official religion of Rome. Constantine, 
who ascended the throne in AD 306, was a very competent ruler. He made Byzantium his second capital, enlarged the city and named it Constantinople. After Constantine's death, political turmoil and invasions by barbarian tribes from northern and eastern Europe weakened the Roman Empire. My dear students, as of now, you must have understood how Christianity in the Roman Empire came and how it has become an official religion of Rome. With that, we'll further move in the video and I will be explaining to you how Roman Empire declined. Let's begin. In AD 395, the Roman Empire was divided into two. The Western Roman Empire with its capital at Rome and the Eastern Roman Empire with its capital at Constantinople. In the long run, this weakened the Roman Empire as the two sides got involved in political disputes. Besides that, the dearth of efficient rulers and decline in trade further weakened the Western Roman Empire. By the middle of the 4th century AD, the far-flung Western Roman Empire came to share common boundaries with the Germanic tribes of Scandinavian origin. Chief among these tribes were the Goths, Vandals and Franks. The Barbarian tribes. Here, Barbarians was used by the Greeks to refer to non-Greeks who were considered uncivilized. So, these tribes attacked large parts of the Western Roman Empire which crumbled under these attacks. This ended the political unity of the Western Roman Empire and led to the rise of regional kingdoms. The Western Roman Empire finally collapsed when the last Roman Emperor Romulus Augustus was defeated by the Goths in AD 476. The Byzantine Empire the Byzantine Empire, also referred to as the Eastern Roman Empire or Byzantium, it was the continuation of the Roman Empire in its eastern provinces when its capital city was Constantinople. When the Roman Empire split into two separate empires, that is, the Eastern Roman Empire, which has became and known as the Byzantine Empire. While the Western Roman Empire was overrun by the Germanic tribes, the Byzantine Empire or Eastern Roman Empire successfully resisted the onslaught of the Germanic tribes. During most of its existence, the empire was the most powerful economic, cultural and military force in Europe. It became a flourishing commercial center and saw the rise of important cities, which had become a very important center of Christianity after Rome. By the end of the 5th century, the waves of barbarian invasions had broken the Western Roman Empire into various kingdoms. There was a total breakdown of law and order. At that time, the Christian Church emerged as the only organized institution that protected and preserved moral values and promoted learning. So, my dear students, 
Here on the screen, you can see the hierarchy of officials of the Christian Church. With that, I will be explaining to you how the organization of the church looks like. The priests and officials of the Christian Church were together known as the clergy. As Christianity gained converts in large numbers, the organization of Christian Church became increasingly complex. Churches were usually situated in urban centers. A church was headed by a bishop below whom there were priests followed by the lower clergy. In due course, the bishop of Rome emerged as the most powerful official of the Christian church. He came to be called the Pope. The Pope became very powerful and exercised great religious and political authority. He could even force his will upon the kings of Europe. Impact of Christian's Monasteries The church came to play a central role in the society. With that, the monasteries always promoted education. On that note, you will be understanding what are the impacts happen on Christian's monastery during those times. Some Christians withdrew from worldly life and devoted all their time to spreading the message of Christianity. They led lives regulated by rigid rules and woes of poverty and obedience. They were called monks. And the institutions in which they lived were called monasteries. Life in a monastery included prayers, manual work and religious study. The monks set an example by doing manual work and this promoted the idea of the dignity of labor. The monks were trained to look after the weak, the sick, and the poor. They also received education and preserved ancient knowledge by copying ancient manuscripts. For a long time, after the fall of the Western Roman Empire, the monks were the only learned people in Western Europe. The Christian monasteries became centers of learning and for spreading education. Subjects such as logic, grammar, arithmetic and religion were taught in the Latin language. This language served as a bond among the educated people of Western Europe. Christianity thus played an important role in culturally uniting Western Europe. Renowned monks such as Saint Jerome, Saint Augustine, Saint Benedict and Saint Francis organized their own orders of monks. They won converts from all over Europe. Saint Jerome was the first to translate the Bible from Hebrew into Latin. His version called the Vulgate, the common version, was the standard Latin Bible used throughout the medieval period. In the course of time, the church began to play a central role in the lives of the people. It laid down codes of social and moral behavior which the people had to observe. These codes became increasingly rigid 
and the church discouraged any form of questioning. Corruption also became widespread in monasteries as they acquired property. By the middle of 16th century, many monks were living lives of luxury and becoming involved in all kinds of corrupt practices. The wandering monks who worked among the people, however, continued to lead simple and pure lives. My dear students, here I am concluding chapter 1. I hope you all must be able to understand all the points which I have shown in the video. If you have any doubts, you can ask your concerned teacher. Here on the screen, this is what we call mind map. With this structure, you will be able to understand how Christianity arouses and how it goes further. Dear students, on the screen, there are some points to remember. For part 2, you need to start from point number 5. Jesus teaching spread through his follower Paul and became the basis of a new religion called Christianity. Some Roman emperors like Marcus, Aurelius and Diocletian were unjust towards the Christians, but the emperor Constantine I converted to Christianity around AD 313. By the end of the 4th century, Christianity became the official religion of Rome. After the fall of the Western Roman Empire, the Christian Church emerged as the only institution which preserved moral values and promoted learning. A church was headed by a bishop. The bishop of Rome can be called the Pope. He exercised great religious and political authority. The monks devoted their lives in spreading Christianity. They gave up worldly life and lived in monasteries. They preserved ancient knowledge and cared for the sick and the poor. The monasteries also promoted education. The church came to play a central role in society. It laid down rigid codes of social and moral behavior. However, as monasteries acquired property and many monks became corrupt. After understanding part 2 of lesson 1, here is an assignment that you need to do. I am going to give you two exercises. Exercise A asks you to do fill in the blanks and exercise B will be answer the following questions. Let's talk about exercise A, fill in the blanks. First, the Bishop of Rome is called the Dash. Second, Jesus laid down a moral code of conduct in his dash. Third, Christian monasteries were the centers of dash. Fourth, in AD 395, the Roman Empire was divided into two, namely dash and dash. Fifth, after the death of Jesus, his teachings were spread by his follower, dash. Exercise B Answer the following questions. Question number one, what is monastery? Question number two, list the hierarchy of officials of the Christian church. Question number three, who was Constantine? Question number four, write two important points in the decline of the Roman Empire. Question number five, how did Christianity gain political support? With that, I'm ending the video. I hope you will understand and submit your assignment to your concerned teacher. Stay home, stay safe. Thank you and have a nice day.